Hello everyone, welcome back. Berry Bloodline has been out in game for a while, and I've seen quite a few positive notes on the weapon, in terms of performance and actual exotic design. I haven't however seen many builds around it, that fully leans into its effects twice more. So today, I want to show you an easy way to do this. Our build will focus on utilising Jarl Falco's exotic effect of applying volatile rounds, and then using said volatile rounds in conjunction with our invisibility. What we'll get is a non-stop volatile build that can stay triggered for a longer time but also giving us devour, grenade regen, and invisibility whenever you like. You're going to be surprised as to how effective this is in endgame, such as GMs, as it really does support the build really well. So let's crack on with it. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step, where dodging makes you invisible. Then you want Status Executioner, where defeating a weakened enemy grants True Sight and Invis. These here will be the bread and butter of the build in terms of applying consistent volatile rounds and invis on demand. We will invest much into our vanishing step ability, as this will be the main one to kickstart the build within the moment of engagement. The fragments used are Echo Obscurity, where doing the finishing on a target makes you invisible. Echo Instability, where defeating targets with grenade grants volatile rounds. Echo Persistence, where void bust applied to you lasts longer and Echo Cessation, where finisher final blows creates a burst of void damage that marks targets nearby and makes them volatile. The Echo Obscurity, Instability, and Persistence is going to be a must-have when focusing on the Hunter's Invis. The last fragment slot leaves you with whatever you have in mind, as Cessation is a good and reliable fragment to use when paired with Jarl Falcon's effect. At the same time, I did also find that Echo of Harvest works out really well for the build with how often you'll be taking out weakened targets. A free orb of power and void breach does go a long way for us and our team, and with certain combos in mind like shown, you can make each debuff created worthwhile for all. For mods and stats, having a high mobility and discipline stat will help with surviving certain endgame content you play in, but also making full use of the kit selected. Mobility at tier 9 will grant us a 24 second invisibility cooldown upon use, which is ideal for how often we will be triggering it. I found that using our class ability to kickstart fights is the best way to make Barry Bloodline as effective as possible the moment you start engagements, as the volatile rounds that get applied will do a lot of heavy damage to the surrounding area. With this in mind, you'll need to keep this one ability as available as possible in case your other methods do run out. Having bolstering detonation for the 12% and distribution for the 4% will be enough to keep the ability going when you need it most. Discipline at tier 10 will grant you a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using Vortex Grenade, which is quite high to use and maintain. However, we do have ways to reduce its effects, for example, having Grenade Kickstart will grant us a 34.4% grenade energy return for our 4 armor charges. Then we have Distribution, which will grant us a 4% ability energy back for all, which is low, but still feasible with how often we can use our class ability. Lastly, you then have our Tether that will not only debuff targets, but will also grant you ability energy back from kills made, and also Devour, secondary effect, of granting grenade energy back as well. So overall, your given stat may be low, but can be easily fixed over the given game time. Now, this would then leave you room for additional mods, such as Charged Up, giving us a plus one to orbs and armor charges held. Then, having Stacks and Stacks will grant us two orbs of power collection rather than one. Having Harmonic Siphon will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go, while Powerful Attraction and Reaper will make it easier to collect orbs once our class ability is free. Now, lastly, for the weapons being used, originally I did want to go ahead and use a kinetic weapon with Osmosis, but instead I decided to go with a different route instead. Berry Bloodline is an exotic sidearm that at first players played off for being a simple sidearm, but it actually offers a lot to the player when they have survivability in mind. With its capability of applying Devour onto any build you have in mind, this makes the weapon an A+, in terms of being super useful in endgame content. Hunters, for example, don't have a lot of ways to get health back outside of the Pacific exotics, but the following is going to make the hunter's life a lot more easier. At the same time, the weapon hits quite hard via body and precision, and can do well against many bosses if need be. Of course, the exotic is more for minor major enemies, but if pushed to, it can inflict some serious damage to bosses. Heavy now, I have the Breta Osprey Adept with Bipod and Autoload Holster, which I believe is the go-to in terms of applying continuous damage for a long time. 
At first, I was going to use a void machine gun instead, so I can apply volatile rounds when procced much more consistently. But then I thought, I won't be staying in one place for too long. So ultimately, it came down to using the following instead, as it has good damage and blast radius, can be fired forgotten, and also gives me the opportunity to test it out with other balls instead. So talks around buried bloodline has been on and off when it comes down to using the following exotic in game, and I want to change that as of now. Buried bloodline is a unique weapon that provides devour on kills, which is as basic as it can get. However, this is what makes the weapon so good as it can be applied to whatever subclass you have in mind and make use of an extremely good and powerful effect non-stop. With free healing and grenade regen from this one effect being active, I want to apply the given weapon to a build that will benefit its strength even more by tying it down into our subclass traits. And luckily, I had a quirky idea of achieving this. By using Jar Falcon's ability to apply Volatile after breaking your invisibility, you can create a constantly hard-hitting void build that can be used even against mini bosses and bosses if you like. I found that Buried Bloodline hits very hard already and can take on a GM minor enemy with no additional damage buffs. Now applying this to Jagger Falcon's effect, Vanishing Step, Stylish Executioner, Echo Obscurity, and Echo Instability, you can ultimately create a self-regenerating build that will provide you a non-stop volatile rounds, non-stop heals, increased grenade regen, and near unlimited invisibility on demand. This right here is pretty much the correct way of making the weapon work in your favour, as it's strong enough to be a primary weapon if you like. And all you need to do is make the rest of your weapon support the following from start to finish. Quite honestly, I believe players are truly missing out on the power of Bloodline when binded with certain builds as it can be a lifesaver in a lot of tough content. Since hunters don't have the free luxury of getting their health back quickly, they have to make use with what they currently got, which is at best their invis. Now though, they can use both in turn and enhance their overall build by times 10. The build is like a mini version of running an all volatile time build using Severus and Closure, as the amount of debuffs, explosions and damage that will be coming out of this will be a lot. However, you should be aware that the build is designed for end game, and it can run out of ammo quite quickly if you don't watch your ammo gauge. I have come to moments where I don't have any heavy or special left to use within my build, which does slow progress of the build down. You must make sure you have a primary available that can be both consistent and reliable when the moment comes, and then once your ammo final mods do kick in, you should be good from there. Overall, it's a fantastic build which is heavily designed for endgame from the get-go, while also making use of the two exotics that pair very well. It's got its issues here and there, but it does really well with clearing up and building up damage over time to the point that it feels like the build has three exotics active as well too. I recommend you give this build a try in lower end content first, just to see if it fits your taste, and then try it in game and adapt from there. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.